Okay. I wanted to stream this, but as y'all, all of y'all might probably know, my internet's garbage. So that I probably should have known that wasn't gonna work. But I'm using freaking cellular hotspot. Frick. Frick. I'm using cellular hotspot. That should be good enough. I have uh Yeah, hey LTE. Why ain't that work? Why ain't that good enough? <gasps> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. So rather than doing this live and allowing people to join in so I have stuff to talk about or people to talk to, which makes things less boring. I I'm gonna just have to record this and upload it later. Ugh. Anyways, yeah. it's freaking eleven o'clock. It feels like ten. Heck, it feels like nine. I didn't. Even... Just time has been weird. But you know what? I plan to stay up till New Year's, anyways. So, New Year's coding stream, yay, or not stream, video, whatever. It was supposed to be a stream, but I can't do it because just everything's shit. When it comes to my internet connections, everything is shit. And that's basically my life. I'm gonna I'm gonna pause the recording and of course I have to lean all the way over here because I can't see the buttons because my main display is blocking some of my monitor because of how everything's set up. I have to lean over here and pause because I want to go get myself some food. I am back with the sandwich. On to the actual topic of this video. Chasm. The Celia Assembly. And, uh, we're. I got most of the Lexer done. So, the entire file, like, at this point that we're at, the entire file has been tokenized. And uh, now, what I got to program in, um, yeah, this is probably going to take some explaining. Uh, so basically, in we there are identifiers. These can be either labels or symbols. Labels are basically markers for different places in your code, and those are mainly used for jumping to somewhere or branching to somewhere, but they can also be used uh, for when, like, if you have, like, a, like a string in, uh, if you have, like, a string in your ROM, like, your, like, your file, then what you can do is you can have a label, and then right after it have that string, you basically use that label to, well, ha as, like, a, basically, a, like, a reference to that string, and use it to, uh, you know, run through it and read it. However, um, there's basically two, like, there's two ways to use an identifier. Well, of course, there's using it. There's also defining it when it comes to how the tokenizer does it. And all that's done is in... All that is done in the tokenize line helper function. The problem is, it does not know if an identifier come across has already been defined. So we have to do that in the lex function, which is the function that the main, that main actually calls. But we need to find all the identifiers. So the first thing we need to do is make a search algorithm 
to find all identifiers in this list of lists of tokens. And the second, and we need to have that return the positions. And then I have to use those positions to take mutable references of those tokens and put those mutable references into a list. Yeah. And then, obviously, we have mutable references for a reason. Because if we find that. Uh, brain fart. If we find that each. That any of. Like, the second we find a identifier token where it doesn't say what type of identifier it is, then we go looking through everywhere and we're basically going to go and compare the content field to see if they match and if they match and then another thing we're gonna have to do depending on whether it's a symbol or a label we're gonna have to check if it like if it's a symbol we're gonna have to check to make sure that the symbol was defined before it was used if it isn't if it was defined after it was used then we have to throw an error basically uh, with labels, though, it, it, it don't give a shit. It could be ever, anywhere. It could be defined anywhere. And it could be used anywhere. It doesn't matter. But with symbols, it does matter. And then, uh, once we find uh, the first like an instance of that content field where the type of identifier is defined, then we take that identifier type and just push it to all those other times where it was used. <laughs> Does that make any sense? And we basically do that going through the whole list. And then once it does, we get out of there and then all those mutable references are dropped, meaning that uh, the original variable, which is part of a list, which is part of another list, can now be used by its owner, because Rust has ownership. And it's also why we called it a borrow instead of a, it, well, it is a mutable borrow, but it's also a reference, but it's usually called a borrow, and you know, because you know, it, they call it a borrow checker in the compiler. I'm going to continue eating my sandwich. It's a good thing I got the sandwich, you know, so. I need to get, like, a mount. I need to get a mount for my monitor so I don't have to go lean over here to look at the buttons. I am back, and I finished the sandwich. And, uh, yeah. So, we're going to have to implement searching algorithm. And then we're going to we're gonna have to do a lot of stuff, basically. And, uh, I'm going to keep that comment there. Just as a reminder of what we need to do. I think, hmm, I do, I want to let mute i equal zero, let mute j equal zero, and what we're going to do is we're going to do some uh, for loops. For tokens, uh, for line in tokens, for for token in line. So that's basically how we're doing this. If token dot actually no, I should probably use if should probably use if let if let token dot info 
B, token info identifier, T, oh, we're going to want another vector, let mute points equal vec, uh, vec. What we're going to want to do is we're going to want to do vec uh, u size u size and then points not push i j Then we want to do J plus plus plus. All right, I forget for some reason J plus one. You have to do that because for some reason Rust doesn't have the plus plus increment operator. I don't know why, but that's how it is. And then here we're also going to do the same thing. So it actually gets incremented. And we're using u size here because that's what the Rust people recommend for using for like counters. Basically. That's basically how it goes. So I feel like this should work. So I actually. That is our line counter. And basically, so we got this super list, and each list inside that super list is a line of code, and that has been tokenized. That is, ba that is basically the code, so that's how we're going to, and J is the to token counter. That's basically it. And so, and we're going to want to do pause, position. So we're going to push the position of this token. And I'm not doing anything with that T. So, but it has to be there. And shut up, Apple Watch. Um, okay, and then after that, if that even works. Because this is basically a linear search. Basically. Yeah, that's basically what it is. It is a linear search. It could be better. But I don't feel like it. Okay, it's late. I got laundry to do at some point tonight. And because if I don't do it, I can't sleep because I dumped it on my bed. Uh, so after that, we could do binary search, but I don't know how to implement that. I, linear search is like easy. Binary search would be better, but I don't feel like it. Like I said, I don't feel like it. Yeah. Even the bin I don't think binary search would make sense, really. Because we're trying to check for 
all values or all tokens that are of a specific type. So binary search wouldn't even make sense here. Not really. It would not make sense in his in this situation. So yeah. Linear search is pretty much what we have to do, whether we like it or not. And then after that, then we're gonna wanna go Oh, and now we're gonna let mute ident talk tokens equal vec and this is a vec token yep uh, so it's not actually just like at Vec token, it's like a mute token. Okay, so four pause. positions. Or position in positions. Okay. Ident tokens dot push at mute tokens position dot zero position dot one would that work okay that looks like it works so what we're doing is we're going through that list of positions and basically putting all of the tokens we're taking a mutable reference or a mutable borrow and we can only take one of those per token. And while we have that mutable reference, we can't access that token. Or the owner can't access that token. Does that make sense? Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to assume that makes sense. Um, I don't even know if this is... I don't even know if this is going to work. But we're going to try. Actually, I'm gonna actually try and build it right now. Build warnings. Oh, cannot borrow tokens. Oh, I see. I see what's going on. So, oh, this is a. Mm, this is something that I wasn't expecting. Are trying to borrow a specific token out of that list of lists but it's thinking we're trying to borrow the entire list multiple times that's uh okay that's gonna be a headache mm, i was not expecting that i was expecting this to work but it i should not have expected it to work Four line in tokens. Oh, I need to take. I need to do reference. Uh, move occurs here, which does not implement the considering borrowing to avoid moving into the for loop. And value borrowed from here after move. And borrowed move value. Boarding to the two previous errors. Some errors have detailed explanations. EO382, EO499. Cannot compile. Cannot compile. Process finished. So. Yeah, okay, I'm gonna do this. Rust C 
explain E0382 Okay A variable was used as our contents have been moved as elsewhere Okay, I think I get that one. But what's the... Uh, okay, well, it seems like it piped that into... Um, more or less. Which are two programs that do the exact same thing. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, E-O-499? 499. A variable was borrowed as mutable more than once. Yeah, okay, so. Yeah, I might need to go on the internet and ask a question. Oh, wait, what? I lost connection. Oh, that might explain why the stream wasn't working. Actually, wait, no. I can still see YouTube Studio. So, okay, whatever. I'm going to have to. Uh, what? CD dot dot. CD dot dot. Why was I in there? CD dot dot. CD dot dot. Why was I in that folder? That's weird. Uh, if let token info identifier token info. Okay. I wasn't expecting this. Didn't I? Cannot move. Binding. I want to dereference that. Cannot move. Okay, well, can I borrow it? Cannot move. Do I have to borrow the line? Okay, but if I borrow the line, then that goes off. I don't know what's going on. Uh, cannot move. Convert if let to match. Else do nothing because we. It still cannot move. Can I borrow? Again? Okay, I guess I have to borrow twice. I, um, I love Rust. But I love Rust, but I hate Rust. It's a love-hate relationship. I love it because it's memory safe. I hate it because of shit like this. I think I might have to go. I think I might have to go stack overflow. I think I might have to go do that. Stack overflow.com. Ask question Bring it to do a mutable borrow of members of a VEC but Rossi thinks I'm trying to mutable borrow the VEC Any similarly phrase? Okay. It's saying. Whoa! What the? Stack Overflow! I think you might have some problems. Alright, let's check this. This question already has. 
answers here. Rust playground code. We need to do forcing that up the reference to self must live at least as long as lifetime A. It's the same. Not the answer I was looking for. It doesn't feel like it applies. Okay, it looks like that fixed itself. Drop an immutable borrow to me. The thing is, I need a mutable borrow. Because once I have all these tokens, I might have to modify them. I know I'm going to have to modify them. If I have any. So... Is how it goes. That is how it goes. This is going to be a freaking uh, cluster fudge. Make moving immediately borrowed ownership. We'll borrow and rest. Back enter converts to borrow of option. Good night. Ninety two. Borrowing a borrow. borrow. Still say it's many, many similar, similarly phrased questions have received feedback like downvotes or requests for improvements. Considering you're updating your question title and body, do you want to script? Well, I hadn't even wrote the body yet. Hello. I'm trying to borrow members of a VEC of VEX of vectors of tokens as specifically tokens of a specific type identifier so I can check uh, how do I phrase this I don't know I'm bad at phrasing stuff um, so I can check for matches check her tokens with subject or identifier identifier tokens with no identifier type label slash symbol And search for other identifier tokens with the same content field so I can make all the identifier types the same and
the assembler I'm working on. Identifiers can be of two types. Labels or sim or symbols. When being defined when being defined the tokenize line helper function can automatically set the identifier type argument of the identifier variant of the token info enum to some identifier type label or some identifier type symbol However, when an identifier is being used, the identifier type is not immediately obvious as it is when defining identifiers. As such, basically just explaining everything I'm trying to do basically needs to be done in the main lex function however in order to do this I need to grab mutable borrows of all the identifier tokens because I will need because unless the identifier type is already some whatever I will have to modify them of this was doing a linear search through my vector of vectors of tokens list of list of tokens and grabbing the positions of all identifier tokens and the second part is actually putting all of those mutable borrows into actually making mutable borrows of all of those identifier tokens and putting those into a vector slash list. However, Actually, wait a minute. Do I need to actually borrow them? I could just work with the token list, but that'd be a lot tougher because I don't just have this handy list that says that already contains only identifiers. And that I can just search through easily. So instead, I would have to 
every time I need to search for specific for identifiers that match a specific content field, I need to basically go through that list of positions, go to the tokens each positions, check the content field. I did have to do that every time instead of just being like, okay, just go through a list. No, I have to go, okay, look at the position list. Okay, go to that token and check it. I can't even. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, I think it'll be easier if I can get these mutable borrows to work. However, Doing this through a for loop creates a problem. The Rust compiler thinks I'm repeatedly borrowing the vector slash list and not the individual. Okay. And I'll actually go and grab a code sample. No idea if this can be worked around or if I'll just have to use the position list and the actual list of lists of tokens. Here's my code so you can check it. And da 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 da. So, now I'm going to type in my code. I wonder, can I do uh, Rust? Let mute I equal zero dash dash I equals line counter Let mute J equal zero J equal token counter. Let mute positions. Vec. Use size. Use size. Equal vec. Four. Line. In. At tokens. For token in line match at token dot info token info identifier T Positions dot push I J J equal J plus one. I 
equals i plus one let mute ident tokens. Back at mute token equal vec for position in positions ident tokens dot push at mute tokens position dot zero position dot one Right, and that's that question. Like to preview a question, and now I have a <laughs> syntax highlighting. Oh, please enter at least one tag. Okay, your question couldn't be submitted. Resolve one issue before posting. All right, post it. Let's uh, let's do this. It's a good thing. <laughs> it's a good thing that one guy in the Rust users forum, like the official one, I told me to compile after just like a few lines of code instead of compiling after 2,000 lines of code. <laughs> yeah, I need to test my code more. <sighs> yeah, if... If all else fails... I can just use the positions list and the actual list of list of tokens. I think that's probably going to have to be it for today. Because I'm probably not going to get an answer. I have to be going for 43 minutes. So I'm probably not going to get an answer until tomorrow. And I have laundry to put up. So, I'm gonna have to uh, end this video. Yeah. Man. On this full screen, you really see how shit this webcam is. <laughs> like you can see that it's grainy. It's grainy. And this is a $2,000 laptop. And it's got a shitty webcam. Why? It's not even 6 by 9 It's 4 by 3 Like, is this, is this a VGA webcam or something? Like... Right. You... You have an awesome day, or night, or whenever you're watching this, and, um, yeah. Yeah, have an awesome day, and, uh, do whatever you want. I'm not your mom, or your boss. Yeah. Just pretty much just have an awesome day, do whatever, uh, do whatever the hell you want, bye.